Hello everyone, welcome to Cornhole Culture, a podcast that will entertain the Cornhole community. I will be your host, Miguel Villa. I am from Chicago, Illinois, and some of you might know me from local tournaments, national tournaments, or my imitation videos that I do about pros and other great players across the nation. In this very first episode, I will be talking to two guys that have started a blind draw called Man Cave Mondays. This blind draw has become the most popular blind draw in our local area and probably the nation. So without further ado, here's Brian and Rob from Man Cave Mondays. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Miguel Villa. I'm here uh, with Brian and Rob. Uh, they are the, the guys behind Man Cave Mondays. Um, they're joining me here in the very new podcast, Cornhole Culture Podcast. Uh, they're starting the very first episode. So I'm very glad uh, that I could get to have some local guys. <clears throat> so Brian, um, introduce yourself. I'm Brian Nolan. I am from the south suburbs of Chicago originally, um, Hazelcrest to be exact. I'm 33 and I'm a Leo. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob Bev. My name is Robert Beverly, a.k.a. Rob Bev. Born and raised south side of Chicago, West Chatham. You know, um, real laid back, entertaining fellow. Just learned the game of bags and I love it. Trying to, try to get better and better every day. Now, before we get into bags, uh, I kind of wanted to <clears throat> set the scene here on who you guys are background wise. I don't, <clears throat> I want to people to listen how you guys kind of uh, came up with the idea of Man Came Monday. Um, but it became so successful, I think, because of your guys' background. Um, <clears throat> so, Brian, I'll start with you. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I know that you have background in entertainment. Yeah, sure. Um, so I have my own entertainment company, Nolan Entertainment Group. Um, and within Nolan Entertainment Group, I do a couple different things in the music community. Um, I manage artists. I promote uh, live music shows. Um, I consult with artists on their careers. And I also book uh, talent for private events like weddings, birthday parties, things like that. Um, and so what I've done, and Rob can speak for himself, obviously, but what I've done is kind of take the way I approach an event um, and the way I approach entertainment and bring that to the bags community. Um, so it, it's helped in terms of making it a little, make the, making the events a little bit more than about bags. Uh, we'll elaborate on that later, but uh, that's how I've taken my background and kind of moved mm. into the bags world. Now, how long have you been doing that? Uh, officially about seven years now, seven, nice. eight years. Nice. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I have no idea that um, you had an event close to my house, you know, yeah. literally five minute walk from my house until, you know, probably a year later that I've been knowing you and knowing about you from bags that, and then I see, you know, <clears throat> you say something in our group chat and say, hey, I have this event going on. And I was like, wait, it's down right down the street from me. And then, yeah. and then going there and, you know, actually, you know, seeing that this is something that you established for so long. And, you know, it's like, damn, he didn't just put this together. Like, in the past couple months, it's like, this has been going on for a while now, and he, you know, but, you have your yeah, following and stuff. The man called me as soon as the night ended. He said, you'll never believe who showed up tonight. <laughs> I did I say said, that. Who? He said, Miguel. But I said, no. He said, yes. <laughs> I said, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so you know, when I walked in, and, you know, and I saw that, and then, you know, I just put two and two together. I was like, no wonder Man Cave Monday is becoming so popular you know like you have a mastermind here on you know of Nolan Entertainment that we didn't know about and you know he didn't you know it's not saying anything um but you know it's like it made 
perfect sense uh, um you know a- after that and it's like you know after that i actually viewed man came mondays differently than from before you know uh, definitely totally changed the perspective of making mondays after i went to an event you know uh that you threw outside of bags you know through the no, I, yeah no and i first i appreciate you coming thank you very much uh for coming out um and yeah it's funny you say that because you know soulful sundays the event uh, that i run now um you know i've been doing that for about two years but before that i had something i was running a different event out in the south suburbs so yeah what you what you saw was years of grinding and trying different ideas and putting things together so um i appreciate that you recognize the hard work great thank you. <clears throat> all right rob how about you what's your background other than bags that has made Mon- Man Game Monday so successful? Well, um, I uh, went to school down south at um, Alcorn State University on a football scholarship. So very athletic and competitive. And I just like, I like to have fun. And when I get into something, I'm passionate about it. I go all the way in. So anything that I'm doing, I want to be the best at. But at the same time, I want stuff different. I, I, like, I like to go left when people go right. I want to do something that other people is not doing, you know, so to catch the eye. I like, I like the pressure. I like to do things differently. So I um, have a crazy work background. I did a lot of different things. I taught high school for three years, coached baseball and uh, football for two, three years. was real successful as well. I um, managed at a law firm for two, three years. Like, background real heavy. I worked for the railroad for four or five years, you know, Um, a lot of things. And I ended up into party promoting and I low key just stumbled into it because of my personality. I I think I can get along with anybody. You know, I'm real laid back, I'm honest and I'm very, very open-minded. And my major's in broadcast communication. So in college, I I ran a radio station, you know what I'm saying? And I did newspaper. So I'm right up here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not afraid of the of the attention, you know what I'm saying? So I got into party promoting in the city of Chicago. I have um the date dating game and I used to promote at um the public league out here in the suburbs, South Suburbs, and just being comfortable with people and seeing what people like. And I also play softball, which I uh, sponsor a softball team and after every Sunday at Washington Park, everybody bring boards out and throw bags. Like it's a big deal <laughs> at the park. Now, mind you, we thought we was doing something. You know, we was <laughs> we, we was buying bags from um <laughs> from um, Walmart, Walmart <laughs> anywhere, and playing on boards, thinking we doing it, and gambling heavy. And reality kicked in. I ran into somebody that can really throw, which was Brian Nolan. At a, at a barbecue out the blue, at a barbecue, I brought out my little my little garbage boards, <laughs> trying to show I got the women there. We gonna have a little fun, and this little short guy beat my head in, and I did not like it. But at the same time, he said, "Man, you throw pretty good," and he said, "Man, how you doing?" It introduced himself. We chopped it up and said, "Man, I know this spot called the Rocking Horse. They got this this Sunday. Got this got this weekend as the tournament going." I've never been to a bags tournament. So we always throw at the park. So my mindset, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get good. So when I go back to the park, I'm gonna beat these guys up. I went to the rocking horse. Um, I think DJ Don Juan, you know, he was running it. It changed my whole life and for it, it was ridiculous. We didn't win a game. Not a, I felt like we was taking on Michael Jordan and Magic like the last dance. It was it was ridiculous. And ever since then, like I told you, I'm competitive. And we've been hooked ever since. We've been we linked up that at that weekend at that party and went to that tournament two days later. And we've been we've been hooked ever since and just trying to get it going. Now I've only been throwing bags a year and a half. I was terrible. I'm I'm okay now, you know what I'm saying? But I was terrible. That's how that's how it started. That's how we really linked up. You know, it was if, if we didn't go to Rocking Horse, you might not know us right now. Yeah. That's, true. True. That's the truth. You know, that's where I met we met all the big boys there. 
Yeah, and yeah. Uh, for the people that don't know, um, the Rocking Horse was actually a bar uh, in the south suburb of Chicago <clears throat> that DJ uh, and Bob Jenkins, uh, they started a blind draw back yep. you know, <clears throat> here in Chicago, blind draws were not a thing and uh they were just starting cornhole just starting <clears throat> with the acl blowing up um the way it did because of uh espn exposure um <clears throat> we were we were able to us as directors uh just like dj and, and bob and um david morris and, and us as directors we were able to find venues now that we could you know sell ourselves and say hey we wanted to run something, run a run a, a weekly blind draw cornhole tournament, um, and I, I don't think we were we wouldn't be able to do that without the ACL, uh, because that was non-existent here in Chicago. So <clears throat> um, I know that uh, once DJ started uh, Rocking Horse, um, <clears throat> there was a lot of attention to it um, with you know the blind draw. Um, so, you know, shout out to DJ, shout out to Bob. Um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. they started, you know, they set the tone, they, they, set, set, the tone. they set the tone with blind draws here in Chicago. And, uh, yeah. uh, David Morse, uh, was the one that started <clears throat> the regionals for ACL. Um, and he was, you know, the director here. So he's the one that got me involved in, in playing, um, you know, competitive cornhole. Um, so he's the one that <clears throat> told me about the organization and so forth. And uh, he's the one that, you know, say, hey, it's bigger than just bar games, you know? So. <clears throat> and, and what people don't realize is Miguel <laughs> and David Morris out of the rated R, we, me and Brian, the PG-13, you know, <laughs> they, they the, the real baggers. We, we trying to get to that level, you know? Right. But um, ACL is, is heavily respected. Like, when we hear ACL, that's equivalent to NFL, NBA. You know, we, we respect it 100%. And we, everybody look forward to the regionals that Miguel and um, David throws. I mean, it's, it's intense, and it makes you – you have no choice but to get better because they, they're bringing nothing but the best there, you know. Yeah. And they run – and people, and people, th people think it's easy. They make right. it look easy. It's so many boys. It's it's a lot of work, but people take it for granted. It's easy to dictate from the outside, but once right. you in that locker room, you see what all the work is. Real talk. And, and, and so true. Yeah. So and the true. big boys that you guys that you mentioned that were in Rocking Horse, you know, um, you have DJ, you have Chris Novi, Tom yep. Gorski, Jay Rubin, mm -hmm. you know, um, Gary, you know, <clears throat> Gary Seller. Yeah. Matt Hanley used to go there, you know, yeah, David yeah. Morris. I mean, it's just Sebastian, Vince. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. these guys are top-notch baggers um, that you could play with every single, you know, Monday yeah. or Tuesday or whatever at a blind draw, and they make you better, you know. So yeah. <clears throat> now <clears throat> going into Man Cave Mondays, you know, we had, you had Rocking Horse, right? How did Man Cave ball – Mondays at public league start. So let me let me let me let me take over, Brian. Can I take over, <laughs> sir? So after I don't know if this is a PG third a PG thirteen <laughs> show, but I'm gonna say one curse word. After the ass beatings that me and Brian was taking at Rocking Horse every Wednesday, it used to be every Wednesday, then they changed right. it to Tuesdays. Right. And yeah. when I tell you we was there faithfully every week and at that time they only had two sets of boards with like 30 40 people it was ridiculous he had dj had a lot of people going and like you said though the background that me and brian have we're kind of used to coordinating and we're like we bump heads a lot because we both we both <laughs> we do right, you know so right. we both yep. strong and we both used to alpha males we used to running stuff and doing stuff how we want to do it and long story short to answer your question after getting our heads beat in, we said, okay, we need to find a spot where the PG-13 guys can throw. <laughs> and we can get away, we can get away from, the, from the big boys. Let me find a spot. And I got all the guys from the park, like I told you, we thought was good. Right. 
and I found the lounge that, um, and the thing was, a lot of people don't know this, they was, Public League wasn't open on Mondays. So I went to the owner and I told, excuse me, I went to the owner and said, listen, I have an idea. Yeah, I don't, y'all not open on money. Y'all not making no money. I want to bring some guys in here to throw bags. It's something different. It's a win-win. Right. I mean, y'all making money behind the bar. You don't have to call no DJ nothing. We're DJ. Brian going to be security. <laughs> and the owner going to be the bartender. So you're not shelling no money. I just have one person in the kitchen cooking something, and we're good. And we end up getting like 14, 20 people. But it was one rule. The, public, right. the Rocket Horse guys couldn't come. I had to, <laughs> I had to build, I had to build our guys up and get the confidence going because we was gonna lose to you. I mean, if if you all came in and beat us, it's blown away. Right. So me and Brian, we low key was rocking horse guys compared to the guys we brought in because <laughs> the ass whooping we got from you all, we got to beat on our guys and building our confidence up. Right, but at the right. same time, our guys got ten times better and we went a full year and a half then we and brian said let's let them guys let's let the rocket horse on over there. we're not scared of them no more you know and right. once we opened that door they came and it ha what what i knew what would happen it kind of scared a lot of our guys away but all the main guys that's and that's what shows the difference if you really like this game if you really got that heart you're gonna stay and you're gonna get better and we had a lot of guys that stayed and it just grew and grew. And the, the respect that the Rocket Horse guys showed us, because like you said from the beginning, when me and Brian went to Rocket Horse, the big names that you named, when they mm -hmm. poured our names, they hated They said, goodness, they didn't want us. <laughs> now, True. they pull our name, they smile, and, and they okay with it. And that's, that's what I like about it is you have, I'm an athlete. I'm a competitor. I want to get better. We right. want to get better. But that's yeah. how Man Cave started from, getting our heads beat in at Rocking Horse, saying we need to get something together. Yeah. Brad, you tell you you take it away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's you you pretty much said it all. You know, we were it, it's funny because it, and anybody not in the cornhole community is watching this. I mean this is a very it appears to be a very easy game. Uh but it's not there's lots of strategy and it can be uh it can be super frustrating. Um so, you know, we would talk on the phone and say, you know what, man, I'm not going this week. And either one of us <laughs> would say, you can't not go. Like, the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Like, the only way we're going to get better is if we keep going. Right, right. We would swallow our pride and show up every week and just some, – some weeks it was embarrassing. You know, it really, it really <laughs> was embarrassing. <laughs> Hey. There were so many good players. Um, Miguel just started talking. He he beat me so many times. I said, "What I gotta do for this guy to speak to me?" You know. What I'm <laughs> and I said, after after he beat me eight times, he started to speak. I said, "Okay, yeah. all right, yeah." yeah. No, but, um, yeah. So yeah, it it was really, um, it was really born out of the need to really have somewhere to to build talent and just to bring new faces to the game, um, you know, because our, our league, you know, or, or blind draw, it was super, it was super casual. So anybody could come and throw. Um, and there's some people that play with us now that didn't even really play that much or hadn't really played at all. And they're pretty good shots now. Right. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the, the initial reason was we, we needed a way to get better and get better fast. Otherwise, we're gonna get laughed out of that place even more. Miguel, I, I do have a question for you, Miguel. So yes. I heard you say earlier, you know, um, when you um went with the man cave after leaving Brian's establishment at Reggie's, <laughs> it made you look at man cave differently. My question is, what was your mindset at first of man cave? Well, I think uh, when it first started, uh, obviously, I knew it started after Rocking Horse, and. Um, all the good guys were talking about it is um, <clears throat> that we couldn't go there. So at first, you know, uh, at first I couldn't go there. Uh, I just heard about it, but it's like, well, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of like they won't, they, they won't allow you to play because you're too good. Whoever's too good can't go over there. So, you know, um, so, so at first it's like, okay, well, once you guys started opening it up and then, 
started catering to the baggers like the way you guys do now you know um it's like you guys are great promoters and you guys are great hosts you know Appreciate and it's it. like um so that's where at first it was like well it was just two guys you know um trying to just get better and or just just try to run something you know but after i knew you guys' background in you know uh, entertainment it's like but it makes, you know, now, now I saw what it really was and it's, you know, catering and hosting uh, events, you know, and it's just, just because it's, it's you, you put a cornhole event, you know, it's the same thing if you put any other type of event. So <clears throat> to the people, yeah. to the people's listening um, that don't have something like this in their hometown, you know, <clears throat> and is it a good idea for them to ban the good players? I mean, it, it worked for you. It worked out. Um, so, you know, I'm just curious, you know, for the people listening, if they want to start something out in their community, you know, hey, do we ban good players? Because, you know, until we get better, and then a year and a half later, a year later, six months later, now they could come and take our money. <laughs> I'm gonna be but, honest. You know. <laughs> we got we got lucky because, like you say, our backgrounds is key. Personality is everything, and you have to show respect and you have to show love to people. And what a lot of people don't realize is, me and Brian, we go throw bags everywhere. We go right. to any spot during the week and do it. You have Brian Pillar on Tuesdays. We try to make sure I show my face there. He runs a great league. You got DJ that's at Mongo's on, on Romeoville on Wednesdays. I go to Shooters, try to go to Shooters on Friday. We try to show. That's with uh, Matthew Donahue. You have to show your face. And you have to, you know, you have to sell. hey, I want to play. I want to get better. And I want to meet new people. You know what I'm saying? Right. You have to. You have to show love to get love, show respect to get it. Like you said, we're not the best baggers. Me and Brian are still trying to win a big tournament. That's our goal. We want to win a tournament to get some real respect on our name. And and I love and people respect us and we show it right back and we love it. You know what I'm saying? And like Brian, he been he been playing bags way longer than me. He sat me down eight months ago. I, I promise you, before we got Ravislow and said, mm -hmm. Rob, I got an idea. And I'm gonna let him take it from there. The idea was that that Rob mentioned earlier was that you know I felt like we could be tournament directors, um, and I felt like we could run our own tournaments um, and take our backgrounds and, and really build something. And um, you know, Man Cave Monday really started to blossom in the past ninety days. Well past 90 days from when it ended uh but really around the end of 2019 right. um, when we changed locations to uh Ravislow Country Club uh, um so shout out to Ravislow Country Club in Homewood Illinois I agree fantastic venue fantastic staff um and really what did it for us with that venue was the room the space um we were starting to build a name for ourselves um but it's a Monday night. And so some people have to work in the morning. Um, and so we needed a way to run the tournaments a little bit more efficiently. Um, and so part of that was the space. Right. And uh, we were able to run three boards, which doesn't seem like a lot going from two to three, but it is. It is. Um, yes, it is. It, it and, is in terms of the flow. And shout out to um, Jim Taliano. He definitely he got us. Absolutely. He got us the location. Real talk. You have to be honest with Rappers, though. You know, he, Yep. He got us. He got us to breathe the room in there. He really did. Yep. Yep. And so um, that's that's where we are today. Um, we're we're still at Ravislow. Once uh, the governor lifts lifts the quarantine, <laughs> um, right. hopefully everyone's mm -hmm. safe by then. Um, and yeah, so that that's where we are today. Now I have two more questions. Sure. Um, who? This blind draw, Man Cave Mondays, is very unique compared to any other blind draw, and that's because of the King of the Hill. 
All right. Who came up with King of the Hill? And for the people that don't know, King of the Hill uh, is pretty much um, – <clears throat> It's a, it's a regular blind draw, but if you win with your partner, you're going to have that same partner the next week. So, you know, if you win, you're going to be the king of the hill, and you, you have, you're going to play with that partner until you lose in the tournament, you know, um, week after week after week. So who, who came up with the king of the hill idea? Well, I, I actually did. And like I told you, I – I like different. Like I told you, you know, I want to I wanna go left. I said, what can we do to entice more people to come that will stand out a little differently? You know what I'm saying? I said, we got a lot of big boys coming, but sometimes, and a lot of people don't realize these bags, some baggers can be babies. Some people can cry and complain. <laughs> they think well, it's just a game. A lot of people take this very seriously. You people know? in the bay, in the cornhole community definitely know there's a lot of babies. It is, so... <laughs> Yeah. I said, and mind you, I know Brian get tired of me. I, I call him. I call him every two hours. If I got an idea. Hey, Brian, <laughs> I've been thinking. I got an idea, you know. But I said we want to do something different that stands out, that'll make people want to come. It's a lot of it's a lot of bags that people don't, you know, like like we seen the the last stand. A lot of people don't. The Pistons and Bulls didn't like each other. You got a lot of baggers that don't like it. I want to play against him. I want to beat him. And I said, let's do something different. And we sat down and we broke it down and said, man, let's just give it a try and see how it works. And if they win, they're automatically partners the next week. I said, I haven't heard of nobody doing this. Let's just give it a try and see how it goes. Right. And mind you, we know how to organize and make sure it's running well. We don't do no disrespect. And we mind you, we call it man cave for a reason. Real <laughs> men, ain't no crying. Hey, we're going to come here. We're going to play bags. There's no back and forth. Hey, let's, we're men. People don't realize it, but once you break it down and square a person up, hey, this is what it is. They're going to apply. And once everybody's doing it, and it, it, it turned out pretty well for us, and, you know? And I, and I think, uh, you know, that was a great idea because, again, nobody was doing it, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, across the nation, I didn't really uh, hear of somebody doing that before. So, you know, this King of the Hill um, really – was different. Some people liked it. Some people, obviously, the good players liked it because they, if they get it, get partnered with a good player, then now you could win four weeks in a row, you know. Yeah. Um, but and so a lot of people didn't like it because of that. So the goal was then, once they get that, partnered up, but it made everybody else that much, you know. You have to get that, that much better. better. Yeah, and it, it just it forced you to get better. Forced you to play well, you know. Uh, throughout the tournament because there was a lot of um, <clears throat> people that lost that shouldn't have lost, let's say, you know. And that's what makes it fun because everybody wants the underdog to win. Right. Now, if you're not mistaken, I think, Miguel, did you get you want to hang a King of the Hill trophy? You got I one did. under your belt, don't you? I did. I did. I won with uh, Tom Gorski. Yeah. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. <clears throat> and the thing is, once people see that, they the champs. And like you said, it can go either way. A lot of people say, man, I'm not coming back because they're there. But then you got the real people that really care about bags. Like, I'm really coming back because I want to beat them. But what people don't realize is now when you come to Man Cave Monday, you have 85% of everybody in that pool is, is pretty good. People don't right. mind throwing with. Right. At a typical right. blind draw, it might be – 50%, but at Man right. Cave, you got big boys that want to come and play. Yeah, and, and I think it all started from you grooming people without the big boys there. You know, I think that, you know, uh, that says a lot. You know, if you look at it now, if somebody brand new comes in, see a 70 people blind draw on a Monday, it's like, how, how did these guys get 70, <laughs> 80 people on a Monday night to play bad? Monday. You know, um, and people don't realize that it started a year and a half ago, you know, when you guys were grooming people to get better. And, you know, I think that uh, if a lot of directors want to get b bigger numbers in their blind draws, um, maybe they do something similar. Um, so, 
I mean, it's because just it was a great idea of grooming, um, you know, and and you know, I now I know why Man Cave Mondays is being so successful. Another thing that I realized that you did different <clears throat> was you made a a Facebook group, um, a chat group, and you put everybody in there, and uh, you know now there's you know over eighty people in that chat group. And every single day that chat group is blowing up, you know. Um, so again, if other directors want to start something, that's not a bad idea either because it worked. And I think that made the difference uh, from <clears throat> when you guys started going from 20, 30 guys to, you know, 40, 50 to 60 guys. You know, I yep. think that yep. chat group was a huge difference. In, in in this whole formula of you know having a good blind drop <laughs> yeah and 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 you 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 praising us but at the same time ours is just the regular season the regionals is the playoffs you, the stuff what you and david morris do that'll be me and brian do we think we can handle it not yet that's a lot of work to go through three different divisions People crying and complaining. <laughs> Money for all three. Like that's a that's a big deal. And like I say, ACL, I give the respect to. Like it's hey, that's the NFL NBA to us. Me and like I say, Brian sends me so many goddamn videos of being badgers. All the all the videos that you do, the people you 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 do, he sent an actual video. Right, watch this guy. Like, my goodness. Like yeah. it's 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 genuine. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. No. And, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Brian. What I was going to say to answer your question, a couple questions back about is it a good idea to ban players? Uh, my take on that, I think that, you know, you have to adjust based on your specific surroundings, right? And so the difference, well, one of the differences with me and Rob is that we actually want to be great players. Um, and so we made some adjustments so that we could get better as players. Um, now, if you're just looking to run a tournament, um, then, you know, you may not have to make those adjustments in terms of who comes and who doesn't. Um, but if, if you want to, if you want to get better, you have to find a way to play as much as possible. Right. right. Um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, if you're Owen two. Every time you show up, uh, you're not going to have the opportunities to play unless you practice on your own right. or go to a bunch of different blind draws. Right. Uh, so I say, you know, you have to adjust based on what, what your individual goals are. Yeah, and, and now with what the ACL is doing because of this COVID-19 and quarantining, um, people are playing by themselves now. Yeah. I do um, see a lot of that. You know, so you have now all these virtual tournaments that uh, you have to play by yourself. You have Ghost mm -hmm. Cornhole um, mm -hmm. that now you play against a ghost. So I yep. think because of those two things, uh, people are going to become better because yeah. before they didn't, I don't think they really knew how to practice or, or practice by yourself is really boring. But mm -hmm. I think now people are getting more used to it and practicing by themselves now they have actually could join a tournament playing by themselves mm -hmm. without you know in your backyard so it's like uh i think people <clears throat> and playing against ghost is not as boring anymore either you know so right. um people don't realize it but this is actually the next phase of people getting better with what happened is now they're playing yeah. by themselves you, you have to you have to adjust. You have to right. adjust to what's going on, which I don't realize. Me and Brad have a lot of stuff lined up. We Y'all you know, gave us some time off. We <laughs> came up with some new ideas. We got some stuff coming. We um we have a queen of the hill coming up, Miguel. Mm -hmm. it, we, you know, it got canceled because of the coronavirus. Right. But there's a lot of, we have, I have 35 women, mm -hmm. 35 women that signed up that want to do a queen of the hill. And we're, we're definitely going to do it. All women, and when I the, the, the little mix that we got in there, people are gonna love it. They're gonna love. It. We're gonna have all <laughs> the guys that guys can't play. We're gonna watch. 
We're going to do the Calcutta with it. It's going to be heavy, heavy, heavy. What's, <laughs> what's the address? What's the address, Brian, of Rabbit Slow on Mondays? 18230 uh, South Park Avenue. Homewood, now, Illinois. Homewood, Illinois. Well, now, my last question to wrap this up. Yep. Um, you know, you kind of said something a little bit. What is what do you see the future of Man King Mondays? You know what what do you see? Uh, what are you, what are your plans? Or, or you know, do you have anything new coming up and um, that you want to share? Um, but well, <clears throat> I have I, we have like I said we have we got a couple of tricks up our sleeves. You know, once everything get going. But the objective, my goal, my personal goal is, I would like to have a hundred people on a Monday. And everybody just having fun, not getting mad or judging nobody, just pure fun, learning the game, drinking. And that's my goal, 100 people. When you get 100 people blind draw, that's unheard on a Monday. That'll, that'll make me just. And I, I think that will happen, you know, in the next, as soon as, the, you know, everything opens back up, you know. Yeah. Uh, where, where, a year and a half ago, there was no Mad King Mondays. Uh sure. A year from now, where do you see Man Game Mondays being? Go ahead, Big well, Boss. Yeah. So in in addition to Man Cave Mondays, the specific event, uh, you know, we've been in talks about really how to uh turn Man Cave Mondays into a brand. Um where we do other things, obviously some merchandise, um different types of tournaments for example queen of the hill um things like that um we want to do a bring your own partner of some sort uh, we've been mm-hmm. talking through things like that so really trying to create an umbrella of fun events yeah. um in the in the bag community um that that people just want to come to because it, it's being branded as a as a man cave monday event I just secured a spot in uh, Bolingbrook. So once everything break, like early July, we're going to have a man cave Fridays for that whole Bolingbrook community. Now, mind you, anybody can come. Now, mind you, because it's just starting off, a lot of those guys can't play, I'm going to keep it within the Bolingbrook people before right, I, right. I allow big boys to come. Yeah, so, just, just like, like said, you did an original Man Game Monday. Exactly yeah, I mean, it's, because, a good, it's a good idea. It's a, I think, you know, I really like that. You, you want, I mean, because at the end of the day, you got grammar school, high school, and college. You have to crawl before you walk, you know. And if you want something successful, you have to do it the right way. And we started literally blatantly from the bottom. Lost a lot of money. And, you know, got <laughs> talked about. People didn't want to, didn't want to be our friends. I remember Tom Borsky knocking a beer out of my hand. Said, get out of here. You know. <laughs> He's 65 years old. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> he had every right to, but it hurt. But you, it, it takes it takes that to want to get better. And I love it because the respect is there. The guys, hey, man, this is the bad community. It's a it's, it's real deal, people. People don't realize it's, it's a big deal. And it changed my whole mindset on things like, I'm a party promoter. I want to have my own club. Right. I, it's to the point now, and I'm about to ask you a question, Miguel. I don't even want my own club no more. I want my own bag where I want to I wanna completely turn it over the bags because you all didn't change the game for us, man. And it's only going to get better. And with the chat that we have, everybody on their community, they, they've been hitting the phone. They on there right now chatting and talking. They, <laughs> they still on it all day. But right. it's keeping people in tune. We got it still rolling and going. Right. You know, and that, like you say, once you get people into it, man, it's fun. It sells itself. You just got to have organization and just be respectful, you know? And like I say, shout out again to ACL. Hey, Miguel, he, like I told you, ACL, this guy didn't talk to me for a month after he beat me five times. <laughs> then he's talking now, so I take it, you know? He, he's good, you know? But, hey, you, you got to crawl before you walk, man. You know, we love yeah. it, man. We truly appreciate you. I mean, you and Dave Morris. Y'all do a great job. I mean, y'all spot on uh, Wednesdays. Um, Pilsen. It's yeah. Pilsen. It's, a. Hey, it's tough. And what I love about Pilsen, I'm being honest, they throw bags, we throw bags on Wednesdays at Pilsen, him and David Morris. And what I love about it is at Pilsen, 
is so leveled and even. It's it's really you got your A baggers, your C and your B. It's nothing but A and B baggers there. So anybody you grab, it's a good time. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And we're in our own little area. They don't bother us. Even though I run Man Cave Monday, my, my favorite day of the week is Wednesdays because I get to go there. I ain't got to run nothing. I just sit back and relax, drink a beer, talk shit, and, <laughs> and, and get it in and have a chance to win some money. Yeah, it's closer to downtown, so you guys get to party afterwards, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lalo's. Lalo's. <laughs> Ah, oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Brian, any final words before we wrap up? Um, yeah, I just want to thank you again for doing this. Uh, I, I see a very bright future uh, with, with this podcast, you know, simply because of, you know, your drive, your love for the game. Your impersonations are hilarious. Uh, so <laughs> definitely, definitely appreciate you uh, for, for having us. Really, really humbling. And, um, yeah, if, for anybody that's interested in running the tournament, uh, people make tournaments. So always right. make sure that you're doing what's in the best interest of the people that are playing in your tournament. You can't go wrong with that. If you put the people first, you'll always win. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> thank, thank you so, guys so much for, you know, no uh, doing this first episode with me. Um, I feel, you know, making it comfortable and you guys, uh, you know, <clears throat> really uh, know how to cater to people and, and you guys are, uh, you know, one of a kind for sure. Um, Appreciate so, you know, it. Appreciate thank, thank it. You guys ACL, so get his man Miguel a TV show, man. He need a TV <laughs> show, ACL. We fight. He got a thousand people behind him. We, we, we got him. <clears throat> so thank you guys. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah. So this is it for our first episode of Cornhole Culture Podcast. Uh, and hopefully there's many, many more. Uh, and the future is very bright. So thank you guys. <laughs>